Okay. Once again, welcome to um, the Cyper training session, the fourth one. I am currently in Cyper test so that I don't create any um, actual actual uh, accounts. So uh, before I proceed to go on with the demos, I want to let everyone know when you launch the Cyperb application, um, this help button right here is going to pop up the Cyperb link page. And I'm going to put all of this in the chat so that everyone will have all of the information. This Cyperb link page is going to provide all of the KBAs, the documentation, the uh, roles and access, the definitions, everything that you need to create your customers to get the um, access to Cyperb in the first place. And um, also at the very bottom, recordings of the demo and the uh, prior training sessions. This one should be uploaded hopefully by the end of the week. Okay, so going through this page, I want to let everyone know that, uh, thank you for attending, because the current method of creating and editing the, the customers in Oracle, which would be these two forms right here, these will be phased out by July 1st. So um, I strongly uh, urge that everyone request their Cyperb roles and start um, creating and editing their customers so that they'll have practice prior to these two forms being phased out by the beginning of July. So this is the link to launch Cyperb. And keep in mind, you do need to um, be on the VPN to access it. Here's the KBA for the how-to the definitions uh, for Cyperb. And then here, this drawer is where you can, right here, here's the form for the um, for accessing the rules. And then if you need any assistance in how to, these three KBAs are available for you. Um, we have the flow charts and then any additional information required for, um, continue on with Cypher. Okay, so now that we've gone through the Blink page, we can proceed with the demo itself. All right, so when you launch the Cypher application, it's going to default to this page and it's going to list all of your favorites for your customers and your accounts. I don't have anyone favorited at the moment, which is why mine are blank. So when we need to go into um, Cypher to search if we have a customer, already in the system, we'll select the search bar, uh, excuse me, the search button. And from here, you have the option to either search via organization or search via person. If you're going to search by a person, it will be first name, last name. But for this purposes, we'll do an organization. I'm going to search Cyperb. All right, so we have several Cyperb customers in, already in the system. And let's pretend that I actually need someone called Cyperb Test 6. But I, I need to verify if this is actually the customer that I want. So I'm going to select the View button either here or here. And then it'll pull up all of the customer details in one page for me to review. Perfect. Okay, so I can review the account contact information and I'll say, you know what, this is exactly the person that I need to contact. This account site contains the address. <clears throat> this is the address that I need. And then when I scroll down to account settings, I'm able to view under invoicing, the preferred delivery method. And if I want it set to paper, I'll say this, oh, this is exactly that the customer account that I need. So I have the party number, the customer number, and then I have the account number. And from here, I can proceed with my contract and invoicing needs. However, if I just, and also the account name, which is, oops, apologies, which is going to um, 
show my organization and the service type. So if I say this is everything that I need and I am DFS, I need a service agreement, um, everything matches here. These are the account numbers that I'll use. If, however, I'll say this is not the right address, this isn't the correct contact, this isn't the service type that I need, I do need a new account. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I will select the row again. And then from here, I'll select new account. Okay, so before I select new account, I need to enter my organization and then the business type. I am business and financial services. This time I'm going to say I'm providing consulting services. So I filled out these two and then I'll select the new account button. Yes, I want to confirm that. One thing to note about Cyperb, this is a live, uh, this is a live application. So everything feeds immediately into Oracle. So anything that you um, create or edit and then save, it, it is an immediate change in Oracle. All right, so then this window pops up. What we're going to do is we are going to um, enter our supervisor's name. Um, it's when you create or edit any of the customer accounts, you're go it's going to send an email to your supervisor with the account created or the um, amendments uh, made to the customer account. And then just type your reason for it and it'll send it on over. So this is, um, the account has been created. I need to provide the customer class. I'll select private. And then from here, next. Um, account name, I'm going to say accounts payable. So accounts payable at ECSD.edu. Okay, um, I entered the name. And then under contact point, you do have to enter either an email or a, um, a phone number. Otherwise, it will not work. I'm going to leave the purposes as work. And when we scroll down to contact responsibilities, everything is defaulted as needed. So you don't need to change anything on here. You can completely ignore this section. We'll scroll back up and select next, and we will move to the profile settings. So here for invoicing, the preferred delivery method that you choose means um, if it's email, once your invoices are generated and completed, the system emails the, app, the invoice automatically for you to the email address that you just entered in the prior screen. If you select paper, that means it is the department's responsibility to send the invoices themselves. So I'm going to select paper because I want to send the invoice on my own. And then I'll select next. And from here, we're going to input the account, um, the, excuse me, the account address. The site name, this is where you're able to enter any unique identifier that you need for your account. So for example, if you have like um, a, a contract number that is set specifically to this customer that you're going to use, you can enter it here um, or anything else that, um, that you need to specify for this certain account. I don't need that. So I'm just going to put my organization and service type again. And then this time I will make up an address. Oops. And then when we scroll down to address purposes, everything's already defaulted. So please don't X anything out, don't check anything and don't edit any of the purposes here. The only thing you need to do under address purpose is under the bill to address, open the drop down, and then select the address that we just input right here above. And then from here, we can go ahead and finalize the customer. So everything says ready to create. That means there are no errors. However, I do suggest that you still go through every every drawer to verify that um, all of the information is correct. And when you've done so, open the top drawer again, and then select create. And this is now creating the customer account in Oracle. So once that is done, you will have your customer number, your account number, and this will be available um, for you immediately. It'll be active in the system. Oh, contact errors in the contact form and save. Okay. All right, let me go back to the account details. to see what the error is here.
Okay. It must have been a glitch. Let me verify that everything. Okay, so everything went through. Um, this is now in Oracle test. I have the Oracle customer number and now the account number. Um, if you want to, if you want to view this in the organizational view chart, you're going to select this summary over here, and then it'll show you the customer tree. So at the top, we have the customer and then the customer number. Um, this was the account that was already created. This is the one that I just created and I can review this, find my account number, and then um, review any of the information for the account. I can re review the information for the contact and I can edit here as necessary. I can review the profile settings all the way down here and edit as necessary. And also for the site regarding the address and make the necessary edits. This is where you're also able to favorite your customer or favorite your account. If I decide that, you know what, I actually, I made some errors when I created this account, I need to go back. I need to edit, um, the I need to make the necessary changes. So from here, I'm going to open the Explorer view. It's easier for me to navigate here. This is the second account. This is where I will make the necessary edits. Um, this actually isn't a private customer, they're state. So I'm going to make the changes here and I will save that as necessary. For the account, if I decide they're actually um, not accounts payable, I'm going to, it's a certain person instead. So I will make my updates and select save. And now I've updated my customer account, my contact. Um, if there's if there is someone that needs to be CC'd on the email, we have uh, created a new way to be able to do that. So if you need someone, this is going to be your primary contact, and we can tell that's the case because um, it started as primary. However, if you want someone CC'd from here, you're going to select the uh, you can excuse me, select the account level open the drawers and select add account contact. And from here, I'm going to enter the contact name, enter the email. And then the, when I scroll down to contact responsibilities, the only thing I need to do is um, select uh, bill to under assigned responsibility. That means um, the system will recognize this as another person to send the bill, uh, the invoice to. So then from here, we can select save. And that is how you will have your primary contact and then the CC'd contact. Um, and then I can say, you know what, I actually want the yeah. system to go ahead and send this uh, because I don't want to do it on my own. So I'll select email to update any of the profile settings. And then if I need to correct the address, I'll open up the site again. Oops. Change the address. And then under address, oh, Put this. I will add the purposes again and then select the bill to address and select save and then the site address is saved. So that is how we create the account, make the edits necessary, and then add a CC'd contact account. Um, going back to the search page, if I decide that I actually did not find the customer that I needed, they weren't listed at all, I need to create a brand new customer. I'm gonna select the create button. Um, 
I'm going to do this via organization, but you can create an organization or a person, but for these purposes, we'll stick to an organization. I'm creating Cyprus test seven customer. We need to select the check button and from here it'll populate more buttons to check. What it's doing is it's checking an Oracle to see if any of these customers already exist to make sure that we do not duplicate. This is exactly what we want, an exact match not found. So I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna select the next button, Cyperb. We'll see how many um, how many customers exist with Cyperb in the name, uh, but it's nothing that I need. And then we'll select test. And then I'll verify again that none of these customers are what I need to. If I need to expand, I can um, pull up this down here, the drop down, and select select the number needed from there. Okay, so once all of these are grayed out, the create button is available to me. Yes, I'd like to confirm that. Once again, we are going to send. Oops, we are going to send an email to our supervisor. And one thing to note when creating a customer. So from here, you actually now need a tax ID number. Um, for these purposes, this isn't test, so I can make one up. But when you when you need a tax ID number from your customer account and you don't have one, you can simply request their W-9 form to get the customer account. For the person, if you're creating a person account, you don't need anything. Don't ask for their social security. Um, that can be left as is. Now that account description is going to be our organization and the business type again. So I'll enter business. And then this time I will do service agreements. I'll close that and open the customer class and select private and we can select next from here. Okay, so then we will create again um, our contact. I'm going to leave my purposes work. I won't touch anything under the contact responsibilities and I'll scroll back up and select next. And then for my invoicing, I want to go ahead and uh, send the invoices myself. So I'll select paper, I'll select next and then enter the site name address and then the bill to address, uh, BFS. All right, so once again, under address purpose, open the bill to address and select the address, finalize customer, and then create. And then once this is finished, this will, this will be live and ready to go active in Oracle for your contract and invoicing needs. Um, as we can see, it's already populating the account numbers and the site number, and then we can pull up the customer number when we go look at the here, it'll be available right here. So the customer number, our account, the contact, profile delivery method, and then the site, the site details. If I want um, a better view of that because I want the account and customer number, I'll just open the Explorer view and then select the account and open up the details here. Okay, so I think that is everything. Um, yes, that's everything for the demo. Once again, please keep in mind, you do need to be connected to the VPN to be able to access the Cyperb application. Um, that is noted in the Blink page and that is being updated in the KBA. And then for the tax ID purposes, I know that this is new. However, it is, it is essential that we have this integrated because we wanted to be sure that customer accounts were not duplicated. And now we are open to any questions and I will open up the chat. Yes, Lizette, um, your question for multiple email addresses. Do you mean for one contact only or multiple email addresses for multiple contacts? Multiple contacts. Oh yeah, absolutely. So when we open this up, I can just and I'm, I've selected the account level, I can add as many accounts as needed. And yes, you can see, see you see, oh, well, thank you, Steve, I answered that. 
Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. G, is your is your question answered? Oh, um, explaining the difference between the account number and the customer number. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So when we go back to the organizational view, the um the entire customer tree is going to show the setup, and this is also highlighted in the blink page. Um, it's a little small, so we will need to expand it. But we have the customer level. There's only going to be one customer. That's exactly what, how we want it. But you can have multiple contacts under one customer because um, <clears throat> OIC could be using Cypherp Test 7 or HDH or ECEC. And then uh, and then from here under the tree, we'll find multiple customer accounts, each with their own contacts, sites, settings, and whatnot. Okay, so we are caught up in the chat. Does anyone else have any other questions? That being the case, I'm going to provide the links in the chat now. And then in the blank page, when you open the roles and access drawer, this is, um, please after this, don't forget to request your, your role necessary so that you'll be able to have access to the application. Because if you don't, then um, you'll get an error when launching the, when launching the Cypher application. Okay, um, if we don't have any other questions, I'll stay on the line for a couple more minutes. And other than that, we can start dropping off. Thank you, everyone.